Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues this time. We head to the campus of Duke University and the home of the Blue Devils. Joining us today is the heavyweight for Duke, Jacob Casper. Jacob, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're going to put you in the Nike hot seat today. How does that feel? I'm ready for it. Ready for it. Congratulations on an outstanding performance at the Southern Scuffle. Uh, it was just, you know, a... a, a Probably the tournament, if if I can say this, uh, and I'll ask you to comment, I think perhaps is the tournament of your life. What are your thoughts? Um, maybe up until this point, but I'm hoping there's bigger things to come. So i got to believe there is. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how, first of all, you got here to, uh, to Duke, how you got to the Southern Scuffle. How old were you when you started wrestling? Um, I started really young. My dad was a wrestling coach in our hometown of St. Clairsville, so I probably started off at four or three or four years old and i was sleeping on the mats as early as six weeks so it's been a long time been a long time so it's it's really second nature for you yes sir all right and then and that's what we train for right that's that's why we get in the room and we roll and we drill and we drill and we drill it becomes second nature it's something we don't think about it's something we do yeah all right so let's talk about you within the program this obviously has elevated you up uh i think were you 197 last year um so i was 84 two years ago and then last year i took the year off um focused on greco and tried to make the olympic team and wrestled 98 kilos what are your thoughts about greco um i think it's really important i think it teaches a lot of hip position hand fighting and i just think wrestling is wrestling you know i think if there's an opportunity to compete you should jump at it i, I wrestled at beach nationals this summer i think if there was a thumb wrestling competition i'd probably go to that and try to win there too it's just just about competing and it's about wrestling wrestling helps you in all aspects and all styles now did you do that out in colorado springs yeah so i actually took second semester away from school um coach lanham coach whistle uh they were nice enough to let me actually take the whole semester off away from school move out to colorado i rented a basement out out there and practiced every day i not only practiced with the greco guys i hopped in with the freestyle guys as much as i could i was just trying to be a sponge stay on the mat and absorb as much as i could so realistically, going out there, you, you became as full as you could possibly. Uh, what, did, what did you take away from, from Colorado Springs? I mean, I took, a lot of, I took away a lot, that's for sure. But I think probably the biggest thing is um, I actually had a Crohn's flare for a certain duration out there. So I didn't really get to work out as much as I'd want to or get to show my work ethic and how hard I work out there. Uh, so I'd say probably it was the mental things. You know, I picked those guys' brains. I tried to spend time with them eating in the cafeteria, figure out how they mentally approach like going into competitions and how they mentally approach their training. And I just tried to take away mindsets and little tips and things like that to improve my game. Coach Glenn Lanham uh, is really encouraged, not only with guys like you, but the team as we are uh, nationally. You're the second heavyweight in my lifetime anyway from Duke uh, to do very, very well. Currently ranked well, going into the Southern Scuffle anyway, I believe you're ranked 17th. I think this bumps you up a little. Uh, do you feel like you're a, a, a top 10 guy right now? Yeah, I mean, I, my goal every year is to come in and be undefeated and national champ. Unfortunately, the undefeated part won't work out this year. But I, I think if your goal is to, to be any lesser, if you don't believe you can be national champ, you probably shouldn't step out on the mat. So that's the goal. That's what I believe I can do, and that's what I'm going to try to accomplish. You were recently named the ACC Co-Wrestler of the Week. Um, I got to believe everybody back in Lexington, Ohio is awful proud of you. I hope so. I, I put a lot of time in. I think they've got to see how far I've come. Um, high school, I was wrestling 119 freshman year. I went 10 and 13 and I've, I've put a lot of money in the bank. It's like, it's like having a piggy bank and just co continuously putting money into it. And it's finally starting to crack open and the savings are starting to flow out and starting to pay off, which is nice. I love that, uh, that comparison. I really do. One of the, uh, the honors you've received is uh, the Ronald McDonald House Charities Duke Student Athlete of the Week. And knowing what I know about Ronald McDonald House, uh, I think that is a very, very cool thing to do. You guys are involved in community activities in and around the Duke campus. Um, and you see your, your obligation to the community, I'm sure, very much like Coach Lanham. And that is you have a big responsibility, don't you? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's one of the, the biggest things about Duke. You come here and you're not only pushed in ath- athletics, you're also pushed in act- academics, and you're also pushed by all the people here just to be a better person and to get active in the community. Coach Lanham has us do soup kitchens and just all different types of stuff, as well as, you know, certain guys on the team have stepped up and filled different roles. We had a teammate start a couple groups on campus, and we've organized gear drives for underprivileged uh, inner city kids. So we've really uh, taken on the really taken on to the community and tried to help in any way that we can ultimately very cool dude uh before we get to talk about the scuffle because i want to break it down a little bit uh let's tell people why you're in school you're you're in school you're wrestling as well but you're going to school what are you studying so i'm actually double majoring in sociology and evolutionary anthropology with a formal concentration in paleoanthropology and anatomy and then probably going to get a minor in african and african-american studies um, I'm trying to hit some pre-med requirements, so the three health routes there, but to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to end up doing after this. I mean, let's be honest. You're, you took those classes because uh, they were easy to get, in, get into. There wasn't a lot of pressure from so many student, <laughs> students wanting to get in, right? Nah, I would say there, there were things that genuinely interest me and uh, kind of broadened my horizons, some things that I weren't, wasn't sure of and I wanted to learn more about and just trying to become a better, well-rounded person coming here. I took Living Religions of the East, and uh, uh, it was an eye-opener for me as well. I, t- I took classes that I wanted to know more about, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're, you're doing the same. Ultimately, do you want to be a doctor? Um, that was definitely the goal coming into school. Um, afterwards, and last year, making the Olympic trials and stuff, I'm not entirely sure where that fits into the timeline. I'd say it's definitely on the table still, but I, I'm not going to comment as to whether or not that's definitely the route for me at this point. There is a, another heavyweight, and he's up at Michigan. I think he's taking a redshirt year this year, Adam Kuhn. And when asked the same question, Adam says he wants to be, a, a, literally wants to be a rocket scientist, <laughs> which I didn't realize there was an actual degree just to be a rocket scientist, but I think that's pretty cool. All right, uh, you, you went into the Southern Scuffle. Let's break it down. You were seated fifth. Uh, which perhaps uh, you deserved a higher seat given the results, but you won five straight matches, including three against nationally ranked foes to take that title at the scuffle this year in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You became the very first Blue Devil to take home a Southern scuffle crown, and you used wins over three top 15 opponents on your way to doing it. Let's talk about it. Ranked 17th in the the last Intermet poll, you defeated 8th-ranked Denzel DeJournay of App State, uh, doing so at 9-7. Can we break that match down? What's it like to wrestle Denzel? Um, he's a big athletic dude. That's for sure. Uh, going into it, you know, and I think going into most of these matches, um, I'm probably not as, as strong as these guys. Um, I know I'm probably a little faster, maybe a little more explosive, but I think where I really separate is I just want it more than these guys. I think if I can make it a brawl and make it a scrap and make it come down to heart, I don't think there's anyone that ever wants it more than me or that's willing to sacrifice what I'm willing to sacrifice to go out and win. So that's really what I'm going out and trying to do. Um, I put hands on him. He was strong. He had some big hands, but I was going to I was going to hit him with the best things that I had and see whether he could handle it or not and try to take him to deep water and find out if he could swim or not. So <laughs> you, I want you on my show more often, dude. You know how to break it down. All right. 11th ranked Austin Schaefer of Oklahoma State was your next victim. You defeated him 8-2. Was there anything in your head that says, OK, it's like Gable used to say, good news, you're going to you're going to wrestle today It's bad news. You got the Russian. Uh, in this case, bad news, you had Oklahoma State Cowboy, Austin Schaefer. Was there anything in your head prior to going into that, say, I get to wrestle an Oklahoma State guy? Um, no, I don't, I don't wrestle the singlet too much. You know, I just wanted to go out and do what I do. I didn't even necessarily, I mean, I wanted to be aware of what those guys had, but I really wanted to stick to my game plan, go out, try to punch people in the mouth and create wrestling positions. I think that's where I'm best. That's where I'm maybe better than these guys at. I still wrestle like a lighter weight, even though I'm up at heavyweight. So that's my goal going out there. Um, I can tell you when I wrestled an Okie State guy a couple years ago, John Smith refused to shake my hand after the match. So that <laughs> definitely adds something. And then Coach Lanham's from Oklahoma State. So it adds a little more zing to it, but uh, I, I don't approach it like any – different than any other match i've got to go back to denzel just for a moment eighth rank denzel uh, de uh you said his hands were big how did your neck feel the next day 
Um, it felt all right. He said, you know, it's hard to simulate a look like that in practice, someone that big and that big, uh, that athletic. So it was definitely uh, different. He got a hold of my wrist at one point. It, it was hard to get it back. That's where I really took note of it. <laughs> Excellent point. All right. Six rank Michael Kroll's of Minnesota was your next victim. You be- defeated him by two, five, three. That earned you a top spot on the podium and helped Duke to a 13th place team finish. What was Michael Kroll's like to, to compete against? Going 5-3, that's a tough score. Yeah, I mean, he was big. He was strong. Um, he moved pretty well. He had good hand fighting, really hard to ride on bottom. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think the one thing I took away from that match is I didn't get into enough wrestling positions, like I was just saying. Um, the one time he did get in on my legs, um, we ended up creating a scramble. We went out of bounds, but I was coming up on top of it, and I was going to get the takedown there, I feel like. So I, that's really what I got to take away from that match and really look to get in those positions, create scrambles, and that's where I'm going to score. Duke Blue Devil heavyweight Jacob Casper, our guest on the Nike hot seat today. Uh, so legitimately, you sit in, you're sit you sitting on a 16-1 overall. You're in the bit of a break right now, but you're heading into the busy dual meet season. You've uh, got three uh, tournaments that you've you've uh, wrestled in and won uh, already, but the, the biggest portion, the most important portion of the year, really does wait in front of us, and it's January 8th. It all starts up on Long Island with a pair of bouts there, Hostra and LIU Post that will be in Brookville, New York. What are your thoughts about um, the beginning of this season within conference? Um, you know, I think our, our conference schedule will be pretty tough. You know, you got Ty Walls, he's a real beast up at Virginia Tech, and you got Solomon, you got uh, Kasoy or Boykin down at NC State. You got tough guys in the conference, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm not worried about where other people are. I'm focused on just trying to be the best wrestler I can be. And if, if I become the best wrestler I can be, the rest of it will take care of itself, I feel like. You said that you don't wrestle the singlet, but yet you mentioned Ty Walls as a tough guy. I know Ty uh, fairly well, actually. Uh, and I know him to be a well-muscled cat, uh, kind of, you know, a, a typical a gym rat, but he's, uh, he's trimmed that down. Um, do you, how do you prepare for a guy like Ty Walls? Because he's a rough-and-tumble cat just like you. Um, you know, I think, it's, like I said, it's probably a hard look to get. Um, I'm not going to probably do anything different than I normally do. I'm going to go out, hit him in the mouth, and see what he's got. I mean, I'm going to go out there and fire, rip some shots off him. That's what it's about. It's about going out and banging and creating positions, so that's what I'm going to look to do. I'm sure he's strong, but to be honest, I've probably been the weaker guy in almost every match in my life, so I'm not too worried about that. i got to believe there's a circle around January 17th. That's when App State uh, comes to call for your first home duel of 2017. Uh, last year, you guys lost to him. I got to believe you're looking to avenge that loss uh, from last year. Yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't in the lineup last year, but both years I was in the lineup, uh, we've beaten them. So hopefully getting me back in the lineup and getting the team going, we, we pull out a big win there, and I'm looking to separate. You know, I had a close match with him at Scuffle, but um, I can tell you yesterday I didn't take off. I'm not taking today off. I'm putting the pedal to the metal, and I'm not trying to just stay a little bit better than these guys. I'm trying to floor it and separate and just start to dominate. That's really my goal. So I don't often admit this, but, dude, I am a fan. <laughs> I'm an absolute fan. I just love your energy, uh, your, your ability to communicate. Uh, it's, it, to me, it's, it's, it's the way to do things. Um, uh, I want to go back. Did, did you guys were in New York at the grapple at the garden, right? Yeah. Two years ago, we were at grapple with the garden. We wrestled, uh, NIU, George Mason and, uh, Maryland. And just, I know my first, uh, gig as an announcer there was like for me, but what was that like for you wrestling inside of Madison square garden? It was pretty awesome, you know. I didn't I didn't get to really appreciate it at first because I showed up that morning and still had some weight to lose. I was cutting to 84 at the time, and it was a real tough cut. But, um, you know, I think after that first match, you get that first match nerves out of you a little bit. It, uh, it really started to sink in that we were wrestling in one of the most historic arenas in the world, and it's just awesome, you know. I think if, if you want to be a superstar, if you want to be a big-time performer, you need to step up when, when the lights are on, and the lights were definitely on there, and it was one of the best times that I've wrestled. So uh, I really uh, cherish that memory. I, I tell you, I could, I could tell when a guy's cutting and he gets on the elevator – and he'll ride up a dozen floors or more and then realize maybe he should push a button as for his ultimate destination, <laughs> what floor he wants. Uh, it's been an absolute joy talking with you today. 
Uh, I can't, can't, uh, it's hard to express. Outstanding interview. I appreciate you joining us in the Nike hot seat. I understand you're going to be joining us on the radio show on the 14th of of January as well. We're looking forward to this because we get exposed to the wrestling public, not just one of the best wrestlers, but one of the most equipped wrestlers. What is your GPA right now? Do you know? Um, yeah, it's it's about a three five right now. Three five, I knew guys that were three five when I was at Iowa. I I, <laughs> I never was. It's an awesome opportunity we have to uh, tell your story, and appreciate you taking the time in the room. Best to Coach Lanham and everybody on the Duke squad. Who would you like to say thank you to uh, for helping to get you in your career to where you are today in this twenty seventeen? Yeah, I'm glad you let me take the opportunity to do that. You know, I, I'm definitely grateful for the coaches here at Duke giving me an opportunity. I wasn't a guy coming out of high school that many D1 programs wanted. Um, Got to thank my teammates here. They push me every day. They believe in me. I came in this summer and I said I wanted to go heavyweight. And the first thing I'll, I'll never forget it, Mitch Feinsilver said to me was, you can beat Snyder. And that was coming right off of his uh, Olympic title. So for, for my teammates to have that much belief in me means a lot. Um, coaches that helped me all through high school. Uh, the Spielman's, Coach Tyrell, Coach Gilmore. I mean, I know I'm going to forget people, but th- they mean the world to me. And then, you know, my family and friends, I've sacrificed so much. I've been so selfish chasing these goals. And for them to stick by me through those times, I mean, that means the world to me. Jacob Casper, I got to tell you, there, there's an old saying that says, steel, sharp, and steel. I think Jacob, Jacob Casper, I think you sharp and steel as well, my friend. Good job on the interview today. Appreciate the time, brother. I'll look forward to having you on the radio show as well. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Duke Wrestling is proud to have this young man on their squad. i got to tell you, he's uh, ACC Co-Wrestler of the Week, Ronald McDonald House Charities Duke Student Athlete of the Week as well, and also a Southern Scuffle champ. He's been our guest today in the Nike Hot Seat. We appreciate you watching. For all of us at Takedown, have a good one, everybody. <laughs>